And here we are at the grand finals of KSL 6. The first time that there has not been a single onside player, not even in the finals. It's Dark and Hero, the grand finals mainstays. And you know what? This is going to be fan flipping tastic. So, Dark and Hero are players that have played each other in the grand finals quite a bit. They play in EPT Korea all the time. Uh, they've played each other in multitudes of competitions. But this is a this is a series that has been dominated by Hero for quite a while. It's 27 to 18. Hero's PVZ. There were there were times last year where Hero's PVZ uh over the like the last month, if you track a Legulac, was cresting over 90%. 89 90% in maps, much less in series. Before he actually, you know, it was Dark that broke him, actually. He was Dark that broke that style in Dreamhack Valencia last year. It went to five games. Hero was looking. Hero did some weird things, let's be clear. But in the first couple games, and it seems like he was coming back. And then game five on Star, was it Stargazers? Uh, I think it was whatever it was. I think it was Stargazers. Anyway, on game five. On the map that had the in-base natural and all that funky stuff, the Zilnaga Tower in the center. Um, we saw Hero doing some cool stuff, and then he blinks on top of Dark's Hydras, and he loses so many of his stalkers, loses all of his tempo, Lurker's now across the map, and and Hero died. And it was not a game that she sh he should have lost. Like, realistically, it was not. So now Hero, though, need a little bit of Noxious, and Lynx are out, so you're not going to be able to delay this for forever. But you can delay it just long enough. And at these high levels, literally any any sort of delay, any sort of uh, any sort of annoyance you can find is absolutely worth doing. So Hero, you know, he delays the third base a little bit. I'm sorry, that, I shouldn't say it's absolutely worth doing. I should say that if it doesn't cost a lot, any sort of delay can impact the end result. That's a better way of saying that. But for now, Dark does have its third base on the way. And Hero's doing hero things. I mean, it's Grass Fawn. You're not going to go for a two base all in. On, I mean, Hero doesn't really go for two base all ins all that much anyways. But especially on Grass Fawn, you're not going to go for that. It's really not going to be a thing. So instead, well, Hero's playing hero style. Oracle's on the map. Rather quick third base. Not the quickest possible, but we should see the Nexus go down before four minutes. And this is something that Hero does uh, arguably better than anyone else, where he will pair that first Adept, or that, that first Oracle with a couple Adepts. And the way that Zergs will go and defend these first Oracles is they'll, they'll put Queens kind of on the edges of things, and that's fine. But because a Zerg wants to be greedy and not build a lot of Lings, adding those Adepts in, it suddenly, it often can kind of be more than a, Zerg, a standard Zerg build can defend. But because we're on 10 Lings and 5 Queens already, it's not going to get all that much. Not just yet. Yeah, depth. Well, thinks about shading in, but there's nothing to kill. So it's not going to. And now the Oracles. This is their opportunity. They're going to dive in. Spore is done in time. It's still four. Five workers hit the deck here. And this is not the best version of this Arras we've ever seen from Hero. In fact... You know, he's, uh, he takes actually pretty heavy damage on one of his oracles. But again, that's the one that's going to trail beyond uh, for the rest of things. And now the adepts move forward. And we talked about this, about pairing your first several adepts with the oracles, diving into two bases at once, really making life hard for dark. And that's what Hero was trying to do. And by the way, this was three Oracles out of Hero. He didn't... Uh, we've, we've seen Protoss players, uh, even Hero, starting to kind of lean more into the two Oracle idea. Oh, he's going to get the fourth. Very nice. He gets the fourth base. But we've seen Zer uh, Protoss players starting to lean into a, a two Oracle, a two Oracle uh, style idea instead of the three that Hero has gone here. But this is like the purest distillation of the hero style. That is a lot of adepts considering shading in. At this point, it is 14 links. There are queens. It, it, it's not quite there just yet, but hey, dead queen. Is there enough energy for transfuse in time? No. Mm. No, there wasn't. But hero doesn't want to take all damage. He wants these oracles to continue to find value. So he gets some drones. 
Doesn't get the queen. And that's going to be okay for now. It, oh, okay, he doesn't cancel the fourth. But if he can get these, uh, oh, if he can get these adepts and these oracles over in time, that could be a dead fourth anyways. Oracles do so much damage. Of course, they're limited by how much health they have and how much energy they have. But just in a flat-out DPS race, they do so much. But it seems like Hero is not going to be looking to do that. Not right now. So he's going to pull back. Adepts go right back home. Hey, stasis traps, though. They're going to... And eh, they get four or five drones. Okay. That's one way. And actually, that's a really great... Uh, as long as Hero actually pulls the oracles away. He's not doing so. Not just yet. But that's a really good use. That's a pretty awesome use of the low, low oracle. It's less commitment. It's, oh, that wounded queen from earlier will now fall down. Creep goes down. And I love how... Um, is this just is this is this game just going to be me talking about how much I love Hero? Probably, but I love how Hero is being uh, so active on the map with these adepts with these early game units denying so much creep spread. But Dark hasn't taken a lot of damage. Let's be let's be clear here. Hero has lost literally nothing, but Dark has only lost ten drones in seven minutes. It's not nothing. Oh, dead oracles uh, targeted down. It's going to be okay. Uh, anyways. Literally zero units lost over the course of this game, but Dark is solidly on four bases now. Yes, it was denied a little bit, but that's fine as long as you get there. He's got his Hive on the way. The Lurker Den's just about done. And this Hydraling style is so good against the majority of what Hero wants to play. Unfortunately for Dark, though, this is Blink Stalker Disruptor. Double Robo Disruptor on the map. And uh, yeah, Hydras can split. Uh, Storms are probably a little bit better. But you go hide your link against like a pure gateway style because the stalkers are just really not all that tanky they do not fight well at all against all these hydras so that's kind of the goal and there is now a very pretty damn powerful timing where hero has he's got disruptors he's got two of them on the map right now he's got a warp prism he's adding on that second set pretty quickly where these lurkers are do not move fast they do not have range and the Disruptors are kind of the perfect solution for that one. So Queen's taking damage. Now Stalker's just out of Lurker range. And they're going to get one. First Lurker goes down. Now there are more where that came from. Three, four Lurkers on the map. But Dark is A, supply blocked. B, he's only just now starting to, re starting to really come in to his own in terms of gas economy. 1,300 gas a minute. Four, five, like eight. Eight gas geysers. He can't really... Can't really go to 10, not just yet. But now the Stalkers, they're going to run forward here. A bunch of Spores, some Spines. Disruptors are going to get another Lurker. That's nice. And the, oh, the Hydra damage as well. But the Lings are going to be enough, at least for the moment, to force this back. Meanwhile, Lings on the other side, they're not going to find anything. Zealot Warpins, Cannons, Shield Batteries, all of that means that, yeah, good luck, Dark. You don't have you don't have attack upgrades on these Lings. They're not going to be all that effective. And now Disruptors are going to go move forward once again. This one's a little bit less effective, but it's damage to Queens. And that's maybe something Queen. <laughs> we can see the impact of the, what is it, two-year-old now? Uh, when, when does that change happen? But the impact of the, the Transfuse change, where uh, it, it's a burst and then the, it heals the rest rather than just a pure burst. So Queens did not heal up all the way, but now Vipers are out. Disruptors, they don't really land, but that's going to be a little bit better. And it's going to knock down a Spore as well. Only so much energy for Transfuses. Hero's Army Supply is starting to climb pretty heavily here. Actually, he's up he's up 30 Army Supply. It's, it's damn hard to push it in a Lurker Viper. I understand. But this army that he's been building is pretty nice. Especially as he's going to start to move these... Uh, eventually move these Oracles forward and start to find some value that way. Uh, get the revelations that you want. And by the way, this is not the end of his game plan. He is not stopping at Link Stalker Disruptor. It's a powerful composition, sure, but it is not well suited to deal with late game Zerg. Uh, Hydro Lurker Viper. Uh, yeah, you, no. Lurkers do a lot. But if you can use that as a stopgap and then you transition into like Carrier Disruptor, whew, that's going to be a lot nicer. So on the high ground, there are Lurkers, but well, now they have Lurker upgrades. They got Seismic Spines, they have Lurker Speed. It's a little bit harder for Hero to push in. So he's not going to. Not for the moment. Mothership halfway done. What are we at? Two carriers on the map right now. And Hero, interestingly enough, is not getting more. Oh, those zealots are a little bit trapped here. This is actually going to be a pretty significant amount of uh, Hero's army supply. And it's not like he's got a massive bank not just yet. This is like, what, 1,500 minerals or something that Dark is going to get. Is just going to find on out here. 
That's actually really nice coming out of dark. It, is, it removes one bit of power on the map, and now Parasitic Bomb. Here you gotta split, my friend. He's not splitting these Vipers, or not splitting the Oracles. He loses two of them. Disruptor shots. Stark is blink forward. They get one Lurker, but man, so many of those Disruptors hit the deck, and all of a sudden, Dark takes a massive trade. Now, these Stasis Traps are everything for Hero right now, but he's gotta give this position up. Due to the fight, due to the mistakes that he made in that engagement, he is not going to be able to hold on to that base. In fact, it will go down, but this is now also the carrier reveal. Of course, on the other side, in the third base, there's a bit of a run by as well. This game is starting to go all over the place. And Hero, do you have enough? There's not enough anti-air here. So Hero is going to be able to clean up this army from Dark if he had detection, but he doesn't. There's no detection anywhere. Cannons are on the way, sure, but these lurkers, they're not dealt with on either side. They're just... There are no Viper, or there are no Oracles anymore. That's an abduct. Hydra's gonna try to target this down, but barely. No, they're gonna get it. There are no Oracles. There are three observers, but they're not with this army. Now they're starting to join the fray. Now the, the the Robo gets knocked down, and all of a sudden, we're talking about how good this was for Hero, about how he was had not lost a single unit this game for so long. Now he's. You know, now he's only up a thousand resources on dark. All of a sudden, this is just th this game has equalized the extreme. In fact, I would go so far as to say that dark is ahead. Dark might like maybe one more base, but for the most part, I mean, he's gonna be pretty okay with this. Even still, this is a scary push. Disruptor shots. Oh, so many lurk. That's three lurkers hitting the deck, and it's gonna be a dead third base as well. So hero. You know what? He finds the value. Been talking about how good it is for him. Now, target fire on the Lurkers. Feedback on two of the three Vipers, but there we go. Mothership gets abducted. And, well, you know what? It's going to go down. Minus 300, minus 300, or minus 400, minus 400 indeed. Whatever the number is, I'm blanking on it. And now, on to the other side. Well, these Lincolns don't get all that much done, but the Mothership falls. The Time Warp does not get nearly enough value. And the Mothership in general... I love motherships getting added in as a maneuvering tool, as a repositioning tool where you can just go and say, yeah, you know, my army's on the right side. Let me recall to the left. That sounds like a lot of fun. But when we're looking at, hey, I, it's just with the army and it gets abducted, it, it dies. Ugh, really, really not a lot of value. So the Hydras are going to run forward and Hero again, he's going to lose this base. But Hero also. Moving through the middle of the map here. And we're kind of going into a bit of a base trade. One that Dark is opting into in the extreme. But it's actually just going to be a recall. So Hero, he moves across the map. He gives his base up, finds nothing. And now the Interceptors are starting to fall. Although we are seeing, you know, in part, some of the change here. Where the Interceptors are not getting targeted as much as they previously were. If the Hydras are in range. And that is kind of a bit of a buff. But now the Interceptors are gone. Well, some of them are. Where are the rest of them? I don't know. Regardless, this game is going absolutely bonkers here. Lurkers now into the natural, into the fourth base, and it's playing whack-a-mole. Uh, Kiro just has to play whack-a-mole at this point, right? Where you just go and everything's everywhere. 41 probes have hit the deck. And even then, like, the, disruptor, the, the detection's kind of lacking a little bit. So, Hero, fight, uh, for the most part, cleans this up. There's one more Lurker. Now, it doesn't really have range, so there's that. But... I mean, this is a terrifying army from Hero. <laughs> it is 12 plus two carriers with almost all the interceptors in tow. And as much as I've been talking about how Dark's done such a good job, ah, Lurker Rass is obnoxious. I mean, Dark did so much there, but if Hero can just run across the map, well, that's going to be pretty scary. But now Hydra's on the other side as well. Base trade 2.0 finding its way on in, but the Hydra's. Oh, uh, carriers, you need to fight this. And they're not going to. Not just yet. They're going to commit now, but still, every carrier you lose is a carrier that you can ill afford because Hero's on 20 workers. This game goes late. It is a game that Dark will eventually win, but Hero's a bit distracted by the lone swarm host and the Hydra's on the north side. So Hero, trying desperately to make something happen here. In fact, he split his army up. Half the half the uh, the carriers are going home, and now my Crypto Shroud means these Hydra's do not die easily at all. This game is crazy. This game is so, so, it's so cool. But now the carries should start to go down. And at this point, because 
I cannot help but feel though we've hit a, hit the point where Hero has missed his timing. He still has this powerful army, sure, but microbial shroud means things don't die nearly. These are plus two hydras that are just not dying in microbial shroud. Fungal adds damage to the interceptors, and by the way, the carriers need to dive on top of this. It seems weird, but the interceptors they could maybe take that fight if the carriers soak some of the damage, but that's not true anymore. And now the care the interceptors they're all going down only 38 of them remain another microbial shroud hydra's getting added in in earnest and as these interceptors continue to fall so too does heroes his goal his ability to live in this game that's all kind of done hero has no money he's mining 100 minerals a minute he cannot rebuild these interceptors even any one interceptor at a time the hydra i mean hey you know citizens arrest the hydra will eventually fall i mean at this point Infestor Hydra is just doing more than enough. Microbial Shroud gets dropped. The last Archon will fall. And as these Interceptors hit the deck, Hero is well and truly... It was an awesome game. And he played an incredible early game. But Dark holds on. And in 16 minutes, we get a banger of Aggressive on. Game one goes to Dark. So, in game number one, we saw Dark take a lot of damage. Let's be fair. Hero was aggressive. Hero did not lose a single unit. He was like the first 10 minutes of that game. It was crazy. And then Dark got into his preferred Hydra Lurker Viper composition. He had a mass run by in every base. And Hero fell down. And unfortunately, that was kind of all she wrote. Instead, well, I'm curious. I'm, I'm excited now to see what Hero has in store for us in this game number two. What Dark has in store for us in this game number two because the games were weird you know that was a uh, hero kind of played like he normally would but dark dark didn't really you know he went up into hydra lurker viper i mean that's fair but uh, generally uh, you, that's actually not how we see zergs play play against protoss all that much more often than not it's the uh and, you know it's uh roach ravager link bane or Maybe Hydra, maybe 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 Hydra, uh, Hydra Ling, something like that. It, um, this Hydra Lurker Viper idea, it just, especially rushing into it like that, it's just not super common. But Dark has uh, been quietly iterating on how he wants to play this game for quite a while now. Uh, he's been, we, we talked about it in the the series versus Cure, and I generally generally I talk about it whenever he plays the ZBT. But Dark has been, I guess it's kind of true here too. Now that I think about it. He has been really enamored with the late game. He really, it, it seems to be that he is more than anyone else, most comfortable with the uh, the concept of getting to the late game as quickly as possible. Uh, of using the units there of uh, infestors particularly and vipers and things like that and getting to lurkers maybe and getting those tier three upgrades. A lot of, it, it's kind of the opposite of I would even argue that Dark used to play where you know, Dark wasn't the wasn't a Peter Panzer necessarily, um, but he certainly was a player that uh, well, um, certainly was a player that loved his mid game play, loved heavy heavy Roach play, uh, things of that nature. And now he's just for the most part, even if he goes Roaches, it's Roaches into Hive. As he does get a link into the main base here. Full scout out. Sees that, yes, there is a Twilight that it is researching. So he should, and, you know, he should have a good idea. That this is Dragon Scales. This is an Adept map. Twilight's researching at this time. Yeah, it's probably going to be Adept. So the question now is, how does he choose to hold? I've heard rumblings. Uh, you know, some minor rumblings, but rumblings nonetheless. Uh, of an idea of a different way to play, uh, a different way to hold the Glaive idea. Where you go, you get a couple more drones. Um... And it's like heavy queen focused or something like that. I need to go back and take a look at my notes. We've seen some of that. There's, of course, the Ravager option where you get a little more gas. You get three Ravagers and you get a bunch of Lings and you drop piles on the Adept's heads. And then, of course, there's 41, um, like 41 Supply Roach Warren. Go up there. It seems like that is uh, going to be closer to what Dark is, Dark is going for. So Adept Shade in. They're not going to find much of anything. By the way, this is just four gate glaives. This is... Not Hero going insanely 6k glaives. So, I mean, he could. But as we see, uh, second and, or third and fourth gas getting added in at the natural. 
this tells us that it is most likely going to be hero some transition out of this certainly not adding on two additional gateways going from there and yeah yeah okay robo uh robo facility on the way so or excuse me robo bay on the way so we're gonna see disruptor drops out of this uh hero's been playing a lot of this as of late he really seems to, he's still tremendously good at the hero style we saw that in game number one even if he lost it he, he didn't lose it because of the hero style he got a lot of value um but it feels like when he's not doing hero style he's going for this glaive adept specifically into disruptor drops where in, in this style you don't commit as much as you might if it was pure disruptors uh you go and you you, you force units out and by the way it is it does seem dark is going for the uh, the heavier gas option the the three ravagers the plentiful lings because that does give you some push potential afterwards you can uh, actually knock the war prism down if the the protoss isn't paying attention but that's not what we see here is the war prism is uh, gonna try to find its way into the main base but there is more than enough defense so yeah oh oh biles 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 uh okay <laughs> he gets the war prism and now that's not a worry whatsoever game one was a game characterized by heroes incredible early game acumen not li he canceled the pylon that was used to block the third base a little bit that was it he, he lost literally no other units a game two two adepts in a war prism adds a lot more hero cannot be too happy about that one especially because when you lose the war prism it slows down the disruptor drops quite a bit you want those two disruptors and you want the war prism to, you want the war prism to be picking them up as they're done but now you got to build a war prism on top of that and that does slow things down lings on the counter attack here they're gonna get the shield battery that much is forgot uh, for, for for sure but uh that should be the end of it these glaive adepts are gonna be more than enough to clean it up and now dark He's not necessarily quite aware of what his opponent's doing. I mean, considering how little hero committed, you're going to assume that there is a tech uh, tech transition and more often than not, when there is a tech transition out of disruptors, if it's not DTs, which would have reared their ugly heads by now, it's going to be disruptor drops. So hero now has that one finally online about 30 seconds later than it should be. And Dirk's response to holding off on all these adepts, to, you know, it's a Robotech opener. He's going to Spire. Which I really do like. Now, shots are going to go off. Ooh, okay. He's going to target the wrong queen. One queen will go down. That was almost two. Which would have been really nice. But even still, the Adepts, well, they're going to get found out out here. But the question now is whether Hero can figure out that there's a Spire on the way. That, that, that's the really big question. And on top of that, Disruptor is on the high ground moving forward. And they're just going to get another queen. There we go. The value continues to get found. And Adepts, well, they're going to find a fourth base. But there's nothing there a little bit slow so dark is not really going to take any damage there whatsoever the glaives or the adepts shade back but again the thing is can hero recognize that this is a spire play does he have vision of it that's the question disruptor shots well they're not going to find it there we go now he knows this is a spire but this is as mute has arrived now luckily a speed prism give him enough space as a, another queen gets assassinated here give him enough space and they will be able to outrun the mutas but look at what hero's doing here this is actually super cool so a, a spire player is the most vulnerable in their game state when the spire is complete because they've been banking gas for their mutas or in this case they built the mutas with that gas disruptor shot is going to get two ravagers very nice and not a single one falls down not just yet and now hero his blink is not done yet but it's going to be done pretty soon and this timing he has where dark committed to how many to like to six mutas that's 600 gas that are not ra that are not roaches that are not ravagers dark is a vulnerable right now and hero is just trying to go across the map and kill him and it seems like he's got a pretty reasonable possibility disruptor shot goes out two more ravagers go down what prism is going to stay alive for the moment running away now it falls but the stalkers are here and blink is done the muters are not doing what they need to do roaches are on top of everything and dark is just getting absolutely shellacked game two hero just runs across the map and kills him one one And in this tied up series, we moved on to Ancient Sister, and it's a big map. It's a long map. It's a map that I don't know. I don't know exactly what we're going to see, but I'm excited to find it regardless. And yeah, it's tied up 1 1. This is going to be pretty good. Oh, I need to hotkey that in. I do like that. Control Shift Fing uh, the, uh, the production structure. 
that is like going to be on the main screen. God, it slides in super well. I, I like that. But anyway, game one, we saw Hero get tons of damage. <laughs> Take nothing, and he loses. Game two, Hero doesn't really get much harassment done. In fact, he takes some damage of his own, and or he takes damage by, again, the adepts getting shot out of the sky, and then he wins the game. So what I'm hearing here is if Hero wants to win, if Hero wants to win, he needs to lose the game. Or if Hero wants to win, he needs to lose the early game. Is, is, is I guess, the story there. Now, what I need to figure out, though, as we're getting into this game, uh, that I'm, again, I'm not super, don't know, don't know quite what I'm going to do just yet. But what I need to figure out is how I want, like, this is more of a run of show question than it is a tech question, because I have the tech, is I, I kind of like the early game. Hey, let's take a look at players' perspectives, like in the picture in picture. I think that's value added. But is it value added if I show it every game? Or like only like the first game in this series? I don't know. Uh, if you are, you know, if you're watching this on YouTube, let me know in the comments. I, I genuinely... I don't have a good idea. I know what I like, and I kind of enjoy seeing it every game. But I can also understand why it might just be a little obnoxious. So, I'm curious. But for now, Hero's doing hero things. This is this is a Stargate opener game number three. As Ling's, hey, they're going to find their way on in. So hopefully they're going to find a decent scout. But one Ling into the natural, one Ling into the main. And Ling in the natural is going to force the adept down. Which means that the Ling in the main is going to find the full scout that it would like. Probes, they get pulled and they kill it, but... Now Dark is well aware. Yeah, this is a this is this is a Stargate opener. And he knows what's happening. He's aware of the tech. And that means hopefully <laughs> he should have spores on time. Now, it's not a guarantee. We saw DRG in classic, and DRG was well aware it was the Stargate opener. He just didn't drop spores. He tried to be greedy, and this is again a pretty common occurrence. It's it's surprisingly common that uh Protoss players or that Zerg players will try to be super greedy and go and uh, they're like yeah i don't need spores i have queens and then they lose 10 workers and it's like <laughs> was that really worth it i don't think so but for now first oracle just about halfway done and depths shading or shading back home i guess and dark well he's got his now sorry second oracle just about done first oracle out on the map and with Queens here, it's not really going to find all that much value. Lings get on top of the third base, though. The Adepts are not here. Oracle's not ready just yet. So Hero, it's off screen, but Hero is forced to cancel his third base. Adepts, though, looking for that value on the other side, making up for it. They're going to get three drones. I don't know about you, but uh, quick math says that is not worth it whatsoever. Three drones are 150 minerals, plus whatever you want to talk about. Kind of value added. A Nexus is 450 minerals. It's it's not. Not any, anywhere close. Now the Lings are going to get around in on the other side. Oracles have to return home again. And Dark is just not allowing Hero to be active on the map. Like, at all. And in this time, we have seen Dark build some spores. He's got a spore in the third. No spore in the natural, but there's not a lot of mining. But he's got a spore in, like, the two salient points. That Hero is most likely to attack into. And now that Hero has three Oracles, he feels somewhat comfortable running across and maybe this is where he finds his value because he's got two oracles and four depths this is a lot of worker killing power oracles dive into the main depths they stay in the natural for now but they're gonna get something and now they shade it well they shade into what is truly the natural hero and the oracles on top lings can't really kill them so now oracles think to dive in from another position queens are so out of position here with oracles a little bit slow on the uptake five drones fit the deck but is there gonna be more Looks like a little bit more damage. One Oracle gets a lot. It gets very low. And the Adepts in the main base, they should be able to shade on out. Yeah, they do. Into the natural, where more damage happens. Nine. Ten drones hit the deck, and these should be a plentiful dead. Oh, that's a great recall here. Only one Adept should fall down. Ten workers hit the deck. Hero takes... I was going to say takes so much damage, but takes some amount of damage. In the early game, he gets his third base canceled. But he counters pretty damn hard. And I'm sorry, I was talking about everything else that was happening. There's the Nidus here. This is Queen Ling Nidus coming out of dark as he attempts to punish 
the adept oracle opener that's a great one queen adepts don't kill queens oracles kill queens in small numbers but not big numbers but the thing is hero was aware of this in advance so he knows just give the third base up he knows that it is never going to be worth it he's got stalkers on the way he's got gateways on the way blink is again halfway done plus one a little less than that hero just has to buy time it, it, it losing that third base is unfortunate but it does not matter at the end of the day so long as he stays alive dark's on 37 drones like he is extremely all in on this perspective he's droning up out of this actually as that oracle takes damage gets the revelation off runs away now the stalker's trapped into a corner here and this is where it gets awkward because there's no shield battery on the other side of that wall these stalkers will all go down queen's adding damage on top of it and oracles have to stay so far away of the queens they can't just sit there and add their damage and kill off all the lings like you would like because the queen's well anti-armor range or anti-air range is a, a thing that has been a, a requested nerf for a long time they got seven range against air it takes so long or they, they just hit so far and now here a third base on the way once again he's now down workers instead of being up like again he was up workers for he was up significant workers for a while but between losing that third base and the time at the time the dark has bought himself to drone back up Dark's in a pretty good spot. And he's got Hydras on the way. Hydra range on the way. One thing he's lacking is upgrades. I, well, you know, let's call a spade a spade here. He is lacking those upgrades. And Adepts, they do find their way in. A couple more workers fall. But he's going to have Hydraling against Blink Stalkers. And that is... It's significant. Of course, Hero is advancing out of this tech as well. Charge is getting added. And, I, you know, I really... Like, Charge Lot Archon or just Charge something. I really like that against... Uh, against Hydra Ling. I mean, yes, if there are enough Lings to really buffer for the Hydras, it can work out well for the Zerg. But Zealots are so tanky and they do such a good job against these really glass cannon units, these Lings, these Hydras. That Hydra, especially when you have like flanking weapons of Zealots or the second round of Zealots, it can be pretty solid pushing through the, uh, pushing through the Protoss or pushing through the Zerg, excuse me. So Hero now is the one that feels unlocked on the map. He's down to bad eight, eight army supply and doesn't really have a great way to reinforce on a map as big as Ancient Cistern. But he does have a bunch of plus one blink stalkers. And that that makes that gives you a lot of agency. That gives you a lot of power on the map, especially with these oracles to keep the stalkers safe as they run off creep. And now, well, charge is just about done. We don't have a Twilight, or we don't have a Templar Archives, excuse me, not just yet. But we do have that Twilight Council. So eventually, I would assume this feels like a, a storm type of game, but. Or at least it feels like it would be good for Hero to get Storm. He targets a Hydra down, moves forward. But for now, Dark's just got his fourth base on the way. Hero's got his own. It's a little slow, but it's not... It's a little behind Dark's, but honestly, it's not all that bad. Worker counts are fairly even. Hero... If you look at resources lost, he's, he's lost a little more. But it's not... Again, it's not all that bad. And as he moves on the map with these plus two Blink Stalkers, as he has Charge Lots in, as he adds uh, Templar Archives, as, uh, I think we're going to get that Storm... He's going to build a pretty complex army that Dark's army is just ill-equipped to deal with. Of course, there's a reason for that. And that is that this is a transitory army coming out of Dark here, where he is he has ideas. And he's going to move far beyond this one pretty quickly. Bailing Nest, halfway done. But more importantly, Infestation Pit is done. Hive is on the way. There's a Lurker Den done, I believe. Could have sworn I saw a Lurker Den. No, I didn't. Apparently not. Uh, but he's going to be able to move into his tier three tech pretty quickly. Vipers and Adrenal and Lurkers, if that's what he wants, and Infestors and all of these things. So, Hero is going to have this time where he will have Charge, he will have Storm, he will have an army that is very good against this army that Dark is building for himself. But Dark's going to stay on creep. He actually has really good creep spread. It's halfway across the map. And if Dark stays on creep, just kind of takes fights as he can, Hero is going to be kind of reticent to move on creep to be honest it's, it's always scary especially given how the game state is eventually dark is going to have the tech where just kind of charge lot blink stock or storm is, is not really what you're looking for Ungles are a thing uh vipers are going to be a thing uh, lurkers really are going to be the big a big piece of value there that dark should be able to find but again for now here does have that timing storm is just about done he's sitting on eight height he's going to be sitting on like 10 to 12 storms and that is a great way to absolutely evaporate an army, especially if it's the storm reveal, if Dark's not aware of it, especially if there's a warp presence. Now, Stalkers blink backwards. The Stasis Trap is a really nice force field. A pretty fantastic force field. And now we're really sitting in this situation. The Calm Before the Storm. 
Both players, their, their tech is either done or almost done. And they're getting ready for it. I don't know how I feel about the idea of these ultras, though. As these lings, now they're going to get shot down. Uh, Stalker's form of, I'm going to say a human wall, but a, they body block them in. I don't know how I feel about these ultras, though. There are a decent amount of immortals on the field, too, but they're being built out. There are archons here. Stalkers actually deal with, uh, with um, ultras fairly well. I guess the, the logic in part is, okay, well, these, these zealots are going to be found out. They're not going to find anything. But I guess the logic here is, yeah, okay, well, yeah, Ultras versus Stalkers, maybe not the best. It's a heavy anti-armor uh, shot. But you add Infestors on top of it, and the Ultras, can't, the, the Viper, or the, uh, the Stalkers, they can't blink away. You can cover them with a Blinding Cloud as well, and yeah. Then that army becomes pretty powerful. I guess that's the logic there. I, I don't hate the logic from Dark. His, his Infestor play is as i've been talking about every time i cast dark his infester play is incredible it's not again not to just beat a dead horse but his infester play is by far the best in the world these zealots though they're gonna find a base and the lings are they gonna be able to save it in time they will oh no they're not oh this last zealot is gonna try to do so much here high templars flanking in from the right side storm number one lands not all that not all that impactful and now the oracle will fall hydra's looking for that split and the Zealot, well, it looks like it's killing workers at this point, but here comes the flank from Dark. Storms on the right side are nice. Fungals go down. Oh, oh second Fungal, but the feedbacks, they they really diminish the power of a lot. And I mean a lot of these infested. So this is going to be a dead base here. Got to keep the High Templar safe from the Broodlings. Hero does. But look at this arc that Dark has. It's everywhere. And, ah, man, Hero moving up the ramp is going to be damn hard. Even as he does kill two hatches. So that's going to be nice now. Infestors move forward. Fungal. Oh, it hits all the High Templar. He's going to be able to chain it. But no, not quite. Feedbacks. Storms. That's going to deny that for now. High Templars run forward. Getting on top of the Banelings that they're trying to morph. The Fungals. Are they going to get the High Templar? No, they stay alive for just now. And now here come the Banelings rolling forward. These High Templars are so low. And there's not a Warp Prism to save them. And now from coming in from the backside, the High Templars getting gently shepherded in. And here come the Zealots on top of the Stalkers. On top of the Hydras, excuse me, but there's nothing to keep him safe. Even still, Hero, he's got a backup here. These High Templars, they're so low. And the Banelings will continue to morph. Investors will get that energy back. And yeah, you know, it was a decent fight for Hero. It was flirting with disaster, but it was a decent fight. But it's not, it was never going to be enough to end the game. So now, Carrier's on the way. Plus two air attack on the way. Hero transitioning into that late game that really did him no favors. In game number one, he went to that late game tech and Dark kind of ripped him asunder. But this game is much more mid game focused. This is not Dark. I mean, yeah, he's got ultras, sure. Well, he's got ultra tech. I don't know if he, yeah, he actually doesn't, he hasn't made any ultras, but Dark is saying, staying much more solidly on the mid game as another base goes down. That's the third hatch that Hero has been able to get. And it's just a couple zealots. I mean, they're plus three, they're strong. But it's just a couple zealots. It means the good majority of the army is able to fight here. As again, fungals go down. Storms, they tickle the hydras a little bit. That one's a little bit better. But now here's got to back up. He wants to be able to defend this extra base that he's been able to make for himself this fifth. And hey, he gets this up. It's a five base Protoss against a four base Zerg. And yeah, you know, Dark, he had a great early game. He traded better than Hero did, and you know, the decision to go for the Hydra Ling Nidus and then back up and drone up and get the advantage was a brilliant one, but now his economy's been shattered. He's he's relying on Hydras against a bunch of storms. I mean, that's just not a good idea, but now they're going to get a couple of mortals here. One will fall, chasing down a couple more off creep, and there's no storms. They're not here just yet. They're going to try to find their way in. Now Fungals on the High Templar. Once again, it's a great detection. You're more High Templar. They get tapped and uh, three High Templar hit the deck. But keeping an eye on the other side. Big counterattack coming in from Dark as Hero looks to move forward. So Dark runs into the third base, but Hero, he's knocking down a lot of creep and he's got center mass into the natural and the main base, by the way. Dark's attacking in one place. Actually, I'm sorry. Dark's attack. We, we can't even keep track of everything. There are four fights happening at once. Zealots, they're going to deny plus three, actually probably both plus three attacks. They kill off a lot of stuff in the main. In the third base here, high carries are starting to arrive. Uh, actually, this base will stay alive. Seems like both, most of the bases will stay alive. Here on the backside, he's got carriers at home. Hydras are just not enough to deal. These are plus three carriers. It's only plus one armor. As I say that, though, more hydras are going to join the phrase. Zealots deal with this one. 
And meanwhile, Hero is not controlling this, but the Immortals, they're doing a great job with the Ultras. And the main base, not so much. So, now that the damage has roughly been assessed, it's not perfect, there's still a Hydra here. Now that the damage has, for the most part, been assessed, Dark is dead. He taps out. Okay. 2-1. Hero takes it. Oh, what a game. Oh, that was a cool game. We're going to game four. One more game. Maybe. Maybe one more game. Hero's up two to one here. He's been looking strong, but these have been fantastic games. And now here we are on Royal Blood. Come hell or high water. Can Dark do it? Well, I don't know. We're going to find out. That's very exciting. God, these games have been so good. These games have been so good. Not sure why my camera jumped like that. Oops. But where do we go? So we've seen aggression out of Hero. We've seen Glaive Adepts and things. Uh, last game, he didn't do that, though. Last game, it was very standard Hero. And uh, quite frankly, a disaster in the early game. He wins, and his Oracles couldn't run across. His third base got denied uh, multiple times. He got some damage on the counter, and then he got Nidus Ling all in, and that killed his third base again. It was just like, ah, oh, man. Punch after punch after punch, just slamming into him from Dark. And I made a joke at the start of that game that I didn't know would be would be prophetic. But I, you know, I said that, you know what? Okay, so Hero in the game that he had a incredible early game. He lost the game. <laughs> in the two game in the game that at that point because it was game number three that he had lost well in the game that he lost the early game he ended up winning the game and that was a joke but apparently that is true <laughs> because hero absolutely lost the early game in game number three and then he played a marvelous game after that point But it does seem on a map that is, you know, it's kind of right there in the middle. It's not quite dragon scales in, in terms of how short it is, but it's not certainly not uh, like ancient cistern or abyssal or um, altitude or something like that. Where it's again, it's just kind of middle of the road. A uh, hero is going to be going for his standard Stargate opener. Uh, I think this makes a lot of sense. You, you got a game to give. Uh, you've been playing very well in your standard play. Or start to beat it. You know, even if you lose, you have game number five. I don't know what game number five is. I don't have access to the vetoes. But regardless, like, when you have a game to give, I, although I, as, as I'm saying this, the logic, the logic that I'm using can go both ways. Because there's the whole logic of, you got a game to give. Might as well just keep doing what you're doing because you've been winning with it. On the other hand, it says, you got a game to give. This is when you throw your weird stuff out. This is when you throw a, D, a dart DT drop or something. This is when you proxy, whatever, all in or timing that you want to hit. Because if you lose the game, you do not lose the series. Of course, I can make I can make that a lot. <laughs> I can make that logic go either way I wish. Any way I wish, because uh, it's caster power right there. But for now, oracles are out and Dark has not been nearly as present on the map with his lings as he was in game number three. He's not. Uh, denying bases and really forcing these oracles. I, granted, I think he did the majority of that when it was a little bit later in the game, but even still. Adepts are going to show up. They're, you know, forcing some reaction, forcing some more lings out. And now the paired oracles here. Dark's not ready at all. Queens are out of position. Drones have to get pulled. One worker falls. Two make it three, make it four. And now as the spores arrive into the natural where the adepts are going to kill a couple more or not. They're able to run away and the oracles, they don't get much damage done. Adepts, they're going to get a couple more drones though. Six, probably seven. No, just six for now. I thought that was going to be much better than it was. Even still. Pretty good. If it, oh, come on. Hero could have canceled that fourth base. But he's not going to be able to. I mean, Dirk's a little slow on it. He actually doesn't have the money uh, to pop it up at the moment. Now he does. Uh, but Hero's just going to pull the Oracles back. He's content with the damage. He's, I really thought he were, we were going to see him dive in again. But it's just... I understand. It's that timing, right? With Especially how active Dark has been with Lings on the map. Where you want to pull your, your defense home. You want to make sure that your fourth base is able to get up properly. But look at... Oh, look at this. 
I talked about how some Protoss players early on have been uh, preferring to go like a two Oracle style. Hero, though, is going the other way this game. He's going for a four Oracle. Adept Shade into the natural. How much damage are they going to get? Right now, Lings are doing a good job of soaking the shots, but it is six dead drones making a seventh. And that's even before the Oracles. They try to dive into the third base, but there is more damage to be had. Eight, nine, ten workers hit the deck. And this is classic hero here. He wins by the harass. He dies by the harass, but he is winning by the harass right now. 16 dead drones. And he's equal on workers against a four hat. Well, a three hat Zerg that has the ability to inject. This is mad. He's going up to five Oracles. This is massive for hero right now. And by, behind this, oh, shades of SOS. This is so cool. So I'm looking at this. I'm like, ah, oh, you know, okay. Twilight, whatever. Bunch of gateways, maybe some aggression moving into blank. No, no, no. Charge is halfway done. He's going charge lot Oracle against a dark that does not have a Roach Warren. Dark has Dark has been lulled into a false sense of security by the way that Hero is playing. And these Oracles have been, they've not been scouted. Three Oracles is pretty standard for Hero. Six of them is not. And Dark has no idea this is coming. He's up on 71 drones. He doesn't know that this is effectively an all-in coming out of Hero right now. Yes, he's droning. Yes, he's probing behind this, but at this timing, it's meant to get something done. Even if there is, is no rubble, but now more and more Zealots are going to warp in. That should be a scout. And Dark has his Roach Warren done. Ten Roaches are on the way. Now Zealot Charge is complete. Plus one melee will be done soon. And here comes the here comes the fleet. Now the Zealots, they're going to run forward. Is Dark right? I mean, he's got eight Roaches on the map. He's got three more on the way. But I mean, yeah, he's going to Desperation Spores and Spines. But I don't know. I, I don't know if he's going to be able to hold on right here. The Lings are going to sh get shredded immediately. Oracles knocked down the spores, so they're not going to provide much of anything. And now right on top of the queen, some Oracles will fall. But that is a sacrifice that Hero is more than willing to make because all the anti-air is dead. And now the Zealots, they are going to run across the map here. Now, Biles, they're not going to land. And eventually, yes, these Oracles will run out of energy. But the it, this fourth base seems almost destined for death. The spores are not going to be enough here whatsoever. I mean, yeah, sure, build a Ravager. Who cares, Dark? Oracle's on top of the workers. The base, everything continues to go down. But you got to make sure you get the base here. I, I think that's... I, I feel like that's probably enough value. Nine drones have hit the deck. But the base has to die before these Oracles run out of energy. So the Roaches, they kite backwards. Hero has deputized like half of his Zealots to kill that hatch. And now he's kind of pulled back a little bit. Seems like the hatch will not go down after all. And that was massive. Don't get me wrong. Dark has absolutely no way to reinforce while well, he has zero queens on the map. But he's still on four hatch, and Hero is not going to get this base, I don't think. Although, as I say that, he's still on a ton of oracles, still building more. So, as the hatch is on, like, 50% HP, it seems like Hero can probably go and uh, send the oracles back in and kill. Because, again, literally no anti-air. <laughs> Do we have spores? Uh, we have two spores. Dark's anti-air is running across the map trying to end the game. It is what's happening right now, but Oracles have energy once again. Diving on top of these biles, eh, they get a zealot. But everything is dead. Uh, this is a disaster here for Dark. He's got, well, you know, as I say that, he's got a counterattack on the other side, so he's going to give up on that chase because Hero has to deal with the roaches finding their way in. This is how a Zerg deals with a sudden muted transition, right? You run your roaches across the map, you try to make, make something, and you try to buy time behind that. But the problem is, the buying time idea. Oh, I, by the way, this Ravager morph in the net in the wall is so sick. It buys so much time and it messes with the, uh, the Zealot AI so much. But anyways, regardless of that, uh, generally when we talk about you know you buy time for anti-air, the problem is is you're actually building anti-air. There are still no queens on the map. There, there are still two spores on the map. Queens are getting made. Dark is of Dark is trading. You know he is up well actually he's roughly equal in army supply he's getting 16 workers he might act yeah he's gonna get this fourth base but the moment this pressure lets up the moment dark realizes that he can't reinforce he better have a ton of anti-air and i'm not sure he will archon's now getting added in oracles turn on their pulsar beams once again and so many roaches they're just gonna go down spell damage don't kill care about your armor in the slightest but oracles do need to chase this down and the burrow is there so I Templar will fall. I, I can't believe what the, the value that Dark is finding in this game. I still am of the opinion that Dark is pretty much dead in this game. 
but the amount that dark is doing it forcing his way he killed the fourth base he killed 20 drones like he has kept here on the back foot for forever he's doing a, like he's doing a good job of trying to buy himself some time and plus one may plus one range is now done these roaches fight better uh plus two melee is halfway done still only two queens though and that is again the big problem this is four hatch i guess five hatch out of dark but he really uh, he doesn't have the production I, it, right now it's not that big of a deal because he is kind of broke but the lack of queens is an anti-air problem and it is a production problem as well so for now the stalkers they're going to try to deal with this do we have blink yes we do so roaches are going to burrow up but they have been revealed they have been revelated i know that's not a word but it's the name of the spell so we're going with it they have been detected and now finally hero has some room to breathe but can dark deal with how many oracles do we have can dark deal with these 10 oracles i i still don't think so these queens are dead like they're, 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 bye bye <laughs> the queens fall down instantaneously oracles on the other side now dark tries to go for that counterattack once again but it's just not finding value the stalkers are just too damn good oracles on the other side they evaporate the economy and at this point dark does really feel dead he's down 20 odd workers he's down 20 army supply plus two uh, plus two uh, attack upgrades for the protoss are just about done and it feels like this is just a matter of time at this point uh, dark's not even up he, uh, he's down army supply too so the stalkers they have plus two they're gonna run across the map here oracles tons of damage four four queens with really not enough energy are not gonna be enough to deal with this so hero has played a very cool style charge lot oracle timing and it seems like we're going to see Dark tap out of this game pretty... Unless he has the most miraculous fight. And Dark is one of the best players in the world at fighting from behind. He is incredibly clutch. But, I mean... Unfortunately, uh, this car has moved on to automatic transition. No clutch here. And uh, Hero is well, going to kite backwards. Stark's blink forward on top of the Roaches, on top of the Queens. Oracles add in. They're just insurmountable damage. And this is... Yeah, this is going to do it. Dark now below 100 supply. Stark's blink on top of the last of the Roaches. And what a cool build out of Hero. He wins KSL 6 and the first time we've not had an onside player in the finals.